Hello everyone and welcome to X3 Albion Prelude. With the Steam Summer Sale on, I decided to look through my Steam game list to see if there was any space games that I would recommend people get that they might not have known about before. Of course there are the big name titles, I'm not going to have to repeat those, people already have those on their wish lists. And obviously Kerbal Space Program goes without saying, but most of my viewers probably already have it. Uh, so I came to this, X3 Albion Prelude, which was the game I was playing the most of before I started playing Kerbal Space Program. So it is from a few years back and the graphics are a little bit dated. Uh, since that time, the same company uh, tried to release uh, X Rebirth, a uh, game that didn't turn out so well, at least from my point of view. Other people might like it. But uh, this game... I think I remember Scott Manley comparing it to EVE Online, saying it was EVE Online without the PvP. Basically, it's a single-player game. It's, it is a single-player game. There's no multiplayer. And the, it, the wonderful thing about it is that you can do combat, you can trade, you can explore, you can build an empire. I mean, seriously, large industrial empire with hundreds of ships, uh, hundreds of stations, if you'd like. And... and it just gives you a lot of leeway so let's get into it I do have a mod it is moddable and there are many mods for it and the modding community has uh, added ships added sectors added uh, complete visual changes added combat changes so you can get a lot of things to uh, customize your experience but let's start off with a new game the music is also very good uh, there are a number of ways to start out. This basically sets up your starting location, ship, and who you're friends and enemies with. There are a lot of factions in this game, and you can very easily lose your standing with them, or get, uh, over time gain standing with them. Uh, that's a little bit harder than losing it. And that determines whether you can go into their sectors without being shot on sight, whether they will trade with you and stuff like that. So there are different levels, you know, first, you know, they're willing to trade with you and then later on uh, they might uh, give you other benefits like being able to buy certain ships, specialized ships. And uh, of course, uh, if you're really bad in their view, uh, they will shoot you on sight. So there are some very difficult starting situations and you can see there are various species that you can be. Uh, a poison paranid, um, a Otas operative. That I think that's one that was added by the mod. Um, but yeah, Talati. And so I think I'm just going to go with a basic one. Well, actually, uh, because it might be interesting to see Earth in this, there is Earth in this. Um, why don't we pick somebody who was born on Earth itself? Uh, because uh, these other uh, species don't get to go into Earth territory that easily, right? Because they're, they're not friendly with Earthers yet. Uh, Terrans, they are called in this game. So uh, Terrans can travel to Earth, but not everybody can. So let's start off with somebody who can. It shows a game controller. I've never played this with a game control uh, gamepad like that. I've got a joystick. I've always used a joystick and keyboard and mouse Incoming message. okay so by default in the game you're not gonna have a cockpit like this it's actually an open view the cockpit is added by the mod and um, I find him nice uh, so here we've got uh, incoming message um, the deplorable act of terrorism com uh, committed against the Terran race and tens of thousands of innocent people lost their lives and so the the people the Terran people want to strike back against the Argon race, though I'm not entirely sure we know that the Argons were actually uh, to blame. But that sets up the storyline. But I have no intention of doing the storyline, <laughs> no intention at all of the storyline. So this 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 cockpit bit is added by a mod by fans for those who want to use a, a cockpit but really um, it's more of an open view and you can have there's an exterior view of course and you can use mouse control here anyway uh, target with T it's been a long time since I played this game basically the last time I played this game 
it was um, it was before Kerbal. It was like uh, 2012 ish. Oh, I've got to remap my joystick with this. It's not my normal sort of orientation. So these are stations, obviously, and uh, everything is divided into uh, lots and lots of sectors. This is one sector. This is the Uranus sector, and uh, you can see Saturn. We could uh, fly. Well, let's. Oh, what? oh, rings, right? Uh, let's see. What's that? Oh shoot! The wrong axis is on roll. You see. Okay. Now I don't seem to have weapons up. Saturn. Let's go to Saturn. That'll get us closest to, uh, closer to Earth anyway. There is autopilot. Um, let's let's talk more about the map. Okay, so there are hundreds of sec. Well, there's more than a hundred sectors. It depends on your mod what they are sometimes, and uh, if you haven't explored them, you can't really see what they are. But there are numerous stations that provide different. Meat and vegetables products and demand different resources so and that's all dynamic so if you want to be a trader you can make some good money doing that by simply bringing in the products uh, bringing in the resources that they need and taking the products and selling them to somewhere else and there are all sorts of uh, NPC ships that are doing just that uh, this is an energy transporter and so you can expect it to be carrying some energy cells uh, for different stations and if they if they get killed and not replaced uh, some stations might be starved of energy cells uh, you could be quite an interesting trader uh, taking out your competitors like this the game I believe respawns uh, these transporters if there is a vacuum and also uh, spawns new stations as well if uh, there seems to be demand so and of course you yourself can build new stations in this game. That is one of the most attractive things. Like I said about empire building, you can build stations to fill the needs of various sectors and make a, make a tidy profit out of that. Uh, quite, a, quite a huge profit. So this is the universe map. We only know of one sector right now and that's this Uranus sector. And before people ask, uh, you cannot land on the planets. Uh, so that, that is a fact. And as far as your actual speed is concerned, you've only really got in-system thrusters. So you don't go very fast. You do have a time acceleration drive. That's that. It's basically the same as time warp in KSP, if you'd like. Uh, here we are at 600%. And uh, you'll automatically come out of it when you're in combat. Uh, well, uh, you, you could try and use it in combat, but when you get shot at, you'll probably come out of it and you can use it to run away but it's just time acceleration it doesn't make you any faster I seem to recall something adding warp effects if you want that Entering system, Saturn. okay so here's Saturn the thing I like about the games is it doesn't seem to be uh, come on Okay, there we go. Um, is that they do seem pretty lively. There are things happening, ships moving about. And it's just a nice feel to the universe. Not much by way of people to talk to. You can have missions. Let's take a look at some of the information here. First of all, we've got incoming message here. We know about that message, though. Let's just uh, okay that. Um, this is the mod saying it's installed and a minor corporation has run into problems with running uh, their business and uh, we've got an opportunity if we want to go over to third redemption wherever that is that's a sector quite a ways away actually um, that that probably uh, starts another sequence of missions there we go and we can uh, figure out our missions um, I have to remember some of this stuff here's the mission log and there's no time limits. Some missions do have time limits. Now, there's not much going on here. This is the shipyard. Eventually, if you want to, ah, uh, there there are pieces of equipment that make trading easier, and you can figure out what items are available for trade at a distance. 
but right now we don't have that installed. You can see a little symbol at that station. That's sort of important. I, I really need to remap the controls. I really need to remap the controls. Um, that station is a Fusion, Fusion Pulse Disruptor oh, Forge. And it's got a mission. That icon indicates it as a mission for us, should we want to accept it. Uh, let's see, can we communicate? Okay, so we select comms and there's, there's a person there. Uh, I'm looking for a I've job. Something that might interest you then. I'm looking for someone to pick up some stuff for me. Transmitting sure. information now. This mission should be easy. Do you want the job? So this person wants 204 energy cells uh, uh, picked up for them. Uh, you have to find them. In this case, it's uh, I don't think they tell you where to get the energy cells. They don't care. You just find uh, buy the energy cells from anywhere and bring it back in 56 minutes for 5,000 credits. I, I don't really have time for that right now. Um, I think it's not worth my while. If Let's take a look at my info. Uh, no, that's not my info. I want player info. Uh, pilot status. I've got 25,000 right now. Um, this salvage insurance is if you need to save while in flight. Otherwise, you can save while docked. That's normal. But if you want to save while in flight, you need the salvage insurance, which costs a bit of credits. And it keeps track of um, where you've been. Well, I mean, how many sectors you visited. And also your your relationship with the various factions. So far we've only discovered two factions, Taladi and Terran. Now aside from the 25,000 we've also got the value of the ship and uh, we should check on our weapons. Do we have any weapons? It doesn't seem like we have any lasers available. So actually we're uh, a little bit worse off than I thought we were. Uh, easy start it might be but we don't have a lot of uh, stuff we could sell for credits. We just have the ship. We don't have any weapons. We take a look at our uh, freight bay. We do have shields. That's nice. 25 megajoule shields. And uh, we have various extensions. Docking computer is really handy, especially if you're trading. Because uh, then you can just tap the key and dock immediately. Otherwise, you have to manually dock. And, you know, scanner, uh, fight command software, uh, I'm not going to go into all the details. It is a very complicated game, um, and you could get really deep into it. And there is the trading aspect. For instance, this Fusion Pulse Disruptor Forge uh, definitely needs energy cells here, uh, turn MREs and ore. Uh, you can see that it needs them because it's just lower than halfway through. And it's not a good time to buy the fusion pulse disruptors from it because it's only got one. Once it's full up, then it'd be a good time. The more it has of the products, the cheaper the products are. The more it has of the resources, the less it's willing to pay for them. So it's definitely willing to pay for energy cells, Terran MREs, and ore right now uh, because it doesn't have the, as much of those and it'll be willing to pay up for those. Uh, my current ship cannot carry XL sized cargo, that's why it is in red. Uh, of course, a uh, proper freighter would be able to carry that. Mines can carry small and medium, I believe. So I can carry the energy cells, ter turn MREs, and water. Okay, anyway, let's proceed. Okay, uh, why, why don't I remap the controls since it's annoying me? Controls. Control. Okay, um. Yes. Much better. Entering system, Jupiter. I didn't count on not having any uh, weapons. So we probably can't get into a fight. Now right there, that vessel, Recon, Mammoth. that Mammoth is a large transporter. You can make a lot of money hauling entire stations. This can carry a station inside of it and deploy a station. If you're going to be building stations, you'll want one of these. Unfortunately, you saw I only had 25,000 credits. One of these could cost maybe 20 million. 
and so we need to seriously make a lot of credits if we ever want to get one of those. And then the stations themselves range from like a half a million credits to um, many millions of credits. So depending on the size and really the value of what they uh, put out, what the kind of products they make. You can actually attach multiple stations together. So um, you don't just need one, I mean, let's say you've got one that's making energy cells and another that uses energy cells to make something else, you can directly attach them together so you don't need freighters moving the supplies from one to the other. There are some large warships out there. I, that's just another transporter. You can tell by the icons what they are. Um, so that is, those are Corvette class warships, M6s. I was hoping to start out with one of those, that would be nice. Um, there isn't actually a battleship out here or a carrier here right now. Those can run into the 60 to 80 million credit range as far as cost is concerned. Now you'll see some uh, aliasing. Oh. That's actually, uh, those are transporters from an enemy, well, currently indicated as an enemy. You can actually change the, your friend or foe settings yourself. Ooh, and fighters. Um, that seems dangerous. Yeah, it seems like those are from the Argons that are currently accused of attacking attacking us at the start of this game. This is the Jupiter Sector, if you didn't notice before. I should have mentioned that. Um, this one has a bounty on it. That's what the dollar sign is. I think uh, we've, we've got some forces around. I'm going to wait for them to uh, clean clean up there and kill those forces. Oh, there's a lot of them, though. Um, you can see here, there are some missiles that have been dropped by a destroyed fighter, probably. And I could pick those up and sell them. So basically, uh, just, just sitting by, waiting for the bad guys to get destroyed. And we can pick up the, the leftovers and sell them. That is a way of going about things. There's a lot of ships though. I don't have to engage them, and I'm, I'm a nimble enough fighter that I could run away. That... A mosquito missile is hardly worth it though. We could check on the info here. This Delta missile is only worth 500 credits on average. Um, maybe they're not worth it. How about Pol Poltergeist, Poltergeist missile? A missile that can be 1,684 average. In swarms and acquires targets. Mm, Sigma missile. This one's 2,500. Alliance Normandy SR1. I think that was added by, by a mod. Yeah. I don't, uh, th this game does not uh, come with Alliance Normandy SR1s by default, that's uh, that's a Mass Effect chip. But, y like I said, you can, you can mod those in. You can mod in Star Wars ships and whatever. I think, uh, let, let's try and pick up that... Sigma. Isn't it like right in the middle? No, it's off to the side. Now, those, those big transporters do have defenses, they're not defenseless. Uh, I'm not that fast right now, actually. It takes a lot to bring them down. But let's get closer to the battle and see if I die or not. Um, you can The blue bar there is shields, and then the green bar is hull. And you can see there is a battle going on. We, we can't really hear it right now. So, this is, this is a space battle in this game. Um, and apparently I'm in the range of bad peoples right now. I do have my shields though. I'm gonna... that... Oh, okay, okay, this is a bad idea. Now I don't have... afterburners are a module you can add, but I don't have them right now. That could help. Well, I seem to have lost quite a lot of hull. Hmm. No, no, that's not what I want. Ship. The info. Argon Buster was once the pride of the Argon fleet. My shield bait. I thought I had shields. Great. What the shields? Oh. 
Uh, oh, these these shields probably don't go on my fighter. These are stuff I can sell. I don't. I didn't actually have shields. Uh, see, the reason I was curious about why my uh, my top speed is only 144 is we could see that it was 176 before. As you take damage, your speed top speed goes down. So I've taken this amount of damage. You can see the green bar here. That's me. And I've taken damage to my ship. Hmm. And I guess I can't equip this. I better sell these and get some shields that I can actually outfit. So, where could we do that? Um, there's this orbital patrol base. This station is used as a no, base of uh, is it? for nearby patrol craft. Providing it's got some shields. We could probably sell the shields there. We've got the 25 necessary. megajoules. And what I need is the 5 megajoules, I think. Okay. Let's or let this start. Let's let this whole battle thing just work itself out, shall we? Uh, where's my little indicator? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's go to that station. Overall, the sectors are relatively small. They're only like 100 kilometers uh, per side kind of thing. So it's not a huge amount of space. It's like a localized region uh, where there's a hub of activity around the planet. Everything is in a common orbit, if you will, to ease commerce. Oh, so it does make it easier to defend the stuff. Okay, I'm gonna request permission to land. Positive, please, dock. As soon as you get green position, and it's lights. indicating where the docking is to take place with that little green marker. I'll try and manually dock. First of all, because I haven't done it in a very long time, like years. And second of all, just to show you how it works, but I have that docking computer, so technically I could just like uh, press Shift D or something like that to automatically dock. You can see there's a string of lights here, which indicates basically the runway, if you will, the approach vector, whatever you like. You don't have to follow it; you can sort of cut in. Looks like we dock in there. Not not everything has a nice little hanger like this, though. Most things just have uh, external clamps. And it's indicating that there is a max speed here. And that is in force. It won't let you dock if you uh, are past that speed. It'll just not acknowledge and you'll bump into the station and the station will uh, get mad and eventually start shooting at you. Okay, and that's docking. Successfully docked. Okay. Welcome aboard this Terran station. I'm using the joystick hotkey to navigate the what you call it menu, just like I would in Elite Dangerous. If you've played Elite Dangerous, this will seem familiar. Now, interestingly, I can't buy the 25 mega joule shield from them. Shield is and the computer tells me about it. And that's because I don't have the standing. Right now, I'm just a Terran Senatorial Advisor. But you need to be a Marshal of Mars in order to buy that kind of shield. But I can sell it to them, which is all I need to do. And now I've got 196,000 credits. And I'm going to get two of those 5 mega joule shields. Okay. The so was now those shields are Oregon are in there. And was instrumental. Okay, so those shields are in. That's good. Anything else I need from here? Maybe. Let's see. Trade more. And these are marines. Thanks. Once you get larger ships, uh, you can use the marines to assault other ships. You can board them. Uh, you'll launch boarding parties. So yes. You can even get marines, train marines, they, they all have their own training, fighting, engineering, mechanical, hacking, and overall. And then you can deploy them uh, to try and board other ships. 
And you can be a total pirate in this, as I intimated when I talked about getting rid of competition by uh, destroying freighters. You, you can you can be a total pirate. There's, there's no limit to that end of things. Um, you can seize vessels, you can uh, try and get people to abandon their vessels and then take over the vessels and and of course get them to uh, threaten them and try and get them to drop their cargo. Uh, that has a chance of happening. It is uh, Everything else is an NPC so it's just uh, RNG as far as whether they do it or not. So yeah, I don't know whether I want to get this electromagnetic repeater. Well, I mean, I guess we could buy those. I'm not gonna buy missiles. It's better to pick them up. Um, at least having some armament would be nice. Let's see if we can put that on. I for, I haven't checked whether that uh, armament is compatible with this ship or not. Okay, weapons. Install laser. Ah, uh, doesn't seem like it. That's all right. I can sell it at the same price. This isn't a manufacturing station, so there's no particular penalty for buying things. But yeah, so you could tell. Okay, you could tell what kind of weapons it can use by this list here. So. Okay. Okay, computer. Uh, However, it'll give me the entire history of everything, but these are the lasers you can use. Mass driver, plat phase repeater gun, gamma pulse emitter, particle accelerator cannon, and impulse ray emitter. It's weird I have a buster. Uh, the buster, the ship that I'm in right now, is an Argon ship, not a Terran ship. So I'm, I'm curious why I, a Terran, would have a buster. Maybe I picked it up from some some uh, body who blew up or something, not blew up, but ejected. Okay, uh, incidentally you can rename your ship. That's sort of important when you start getting hundreds of them. Remember, you can uh, you can get ships and you can have them trade thing uh, trade automatically. You can have them defend your assets too. You could have all sorts of pilots working for you, defending your assets. And so, my property. Right now, I just have the ship, but this is obviously a listing for all your stations, ships, fighter wings. You could have entire wings of uh, fighters and battleships and everything uh, organized. The sectors your stuff is in, your personnel like your marines, and your stats about how much you uh, you have. So you can see, we, you can hire ships like those mammoths to move your stations for you. So if you don't have one of your own, you can hire a station mover. And of course your marines. For now I'm just going to rename the ship and I'm gonna call it Explorer 1. I don't know, I can't think of something. Okay, and there we are. Now we can't unfortunately repair our hull inside here. So let's undock and go forward a bit. Let's see, is the battle fin the battle seems to be finished. And there's some nice stuff lying around. What is the capacity of our cargo hold? We've only got 108 units. It's probably not a good idea for us to pick the energy cells because they'll take up all the space. There are all these missiles. There must be some missile here that's worth some money. That's 4,000 apiece, which is nothing to sneeze at. Um, Wasp isn't to that important. That's a 6,740. Um, Let's let's target okay, that one. Missile. Anyway, time to profit off of those battles. We don't have any weapons, so it's not like we can do any shooting of our own. Okay, uh, the the yellow arrows always go to the quest marker. You can disable that. So my missions uh, disable guidance, and suddenly that gate isn't particularly lit. Uh, there's what we really want. And I forget if I have to open the cargo bay. Now let me get away from the station first. Now, there is still some battling going on. Let me park it here and do some repairs. So here we are. Um, 
that's part. Okay, um, I want to eject. Uh, do I remember how to do that? Oh, um, eject from ship. Yep. Okay, um, okay, I have to remember how to EVA in this game too. Okay, so it, it's tough to see my ship right now. Um, but I've got a little repair laser. This is how you repair your ship. Unless you want to actually pay for repairs at a shipyard, you can do that too. So you can EVA and repair your ship. Something I wish more games had, and more games went into more detail with than just firing a laser like this. It would be really good. So now, now it seems to be all repaired. And I've uh, got that selected, I think. Or no? Ah, now I've got it selected. Target, enter ship. Now we're back in. Okay, moving right along. Let's see. I hope that Tempest missile is still sitting there. Select Tempest this target. Missile. Oh yeah, there is still some battling going on. You can see one of the uh, some of the enemy forces still there. Oh, that was a bit of an explosion. I believe you can get damaged if you're too close to an explosion like that. There is a blast radius. Uh, this in front of us here, that's a battleship. Terra. They carry, I mean, the carriers can carry dozens of fighters. They're proper carriers, and they're about the same size as the battleship. Battleship has serious firepower. Speed is in meters per second, and you can sort of see, my, this, is, this is my speed right here, so. You can sort of get a sense of it. I'm approaching this crate. I forget if I have to open the cargo bay or not. Let's find out. I may explode right here. Cargo bay nope. Now contains Tempest missile. So that's it. It's an easy pickup system. As long as the cargo can actually fit your craft. Gotta make sure of that. Lots of energy cells, so if you wanted to do that energy cell mission that that one station had, well, you could just pick them up from here. Uh, most uh, These mosquito missiles aren't worth picking up. How about this cyclo missile? That sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but large container. We can't do large containers. Or can we? I forget. Let me check. The Argon oh, we can. Okay. Anyway, I, I won't waste your time. Let's let's not just pick up missiles. Let's uh, proceed down towards Earth and see what Earth looks like. Um, to the asteroid belt. Faint asteroid belt. And if we take a look at our galaxy map, it's starting to shape up. Uh, right now, if you uh, go to it, it only says uh, only stored object information available. You can set up satellites to maintain surveillance of this, and that'll help you if you wanted to get updated trading information, for instance, um, so that you know where to bring your wares, where to buy various items. Because not every sector has every item, far from it. You can find yourself having to go quite a distance. Uh, certain weapons and shields are only produced by certain... Uh, races so and that's one reason and of course ships also are race dependent as well so if you are not on the best of terms with the various peoples in this galaxy you're you got to be losing out on the ability to buy certain things unless you can find it by some third party way Asteroid like belt. you know it's floating around after a battle for instance You can mine asteroids, 
if, if you're curious, uh, this is the asteroid belt. Yes, you can do asteroid mining. They are a lot closer than they uh, strictly ought to be, but there are the asteroids. You can get an asteroid scanner to figure out which asteroids have a lot of stuff, and then you're going to have to have stuff to scoop, have equipment to scoop it up. Obviously, you'd like to put all that on a ship that's larger than this one. Uh, something has triggered my warning. But I don't know what it is. Hmm. We could go into a lot of information about the various races, including the two um, generally nasty ones that I'll, that you really can't be friendly with, the Xenons and the Cock. So, oh, there we go. There's there's a bad guy. That, that's a serious bad guy force right there. I say bad guys, but um, th they're generally good guys. I mean, if you're playing Argon, of course, they'll be the good guys. So, yep. Uh, the only uh, species that are bad for everybody are the Xenon and Ka. Uh, there might be a start where you play one of those. Uh, it might have been modded in, though. The Xenon are uh, terraforming robots that went awry, and the Ka are just plain nasty, that's all. Oh, uh, I think one of our friendly forces was killed by that. Argon, battle group, Cerberus. Cerberus. Hmm. Never a good sign. There you have an asteroid mining base. The different species have different shaped stations. They're very distinctive. Centaur. Good name for a ship. Argon, but it's a bad guy. Centaur. And let me see. This is what a centaur looks like. Enemy ship, though. If you like that look, um, maybe you should be an Argon. There's also an Argon ship. Same basic idea. Uh, let me see if I can target a Terran ship. Argon and Terrans are both both human uh, humans, basically. They're basically humans. The other species are a little bit more interesting. Um, Terran Katana. Let's target that. Terran Escort Katana. That's a Katana. So that's a Terran ship. Just like that. Entering system Mars. Um, well it says Mars. Where is Mars? No, it's around here somewhere. You know that thing where you, uh, enter the sphere of influence of a planet, but you can't really figure out where the planet is? I think it's probably behind the gate, isn't it? Yep, it's behind the gate. Sneaky Mars. Looks good. You can't... I mean, I guess you could get closer to it, but not that much closer. And you can't land on it, unfortunately. Generally, if you want to figure out where the gates are, you could follow the trail of other ships. You can see there's a definite tendency for them to go along this way. So you know there's probably a gate somewhere over there. Now, of course, that's only if you can't see it. In this case, we can see it. You can drop the HUD, by the way, if, uh, let me see. There is, if you just want to enjoy the view, because it still looks nice after all this time. Interface. Shift H. So you can just drop the entire HUD as you're traveling. Ooh, there's a, that's a... Carrier cock carrier right there and uh, well those those guys just jump in sometimes they're not like the Argons who are uh, attacking border territories in order to gain ground the cock just like to cause chaos they got some advanced weaponry though that was a quick quick battle though but then again it's a carrier so if it lost all of its fighters, it didn't really have any defense. Well, not much defense, anyway. 
But yeah, I wanted to take a look. We've got more standings here. Argon, enemy of the Federation, so they're not gonna like us. Boron Acquaintance. They're squid-like creatures. And we are now acquainted with them. They have, they have greenish ships with tentacles. Uh, split creatures, they're generally rude, but they have nice fast ships. Tladi Prophet Initiate. Uh, they, they're big on... Uh, they're lizard-like. And they're big on econ and uh, commerce. Goner is skeptic. Goners are a religious faction. Uh, their religion was that uh, they believe that the Argons actually came from the Terrans, which is true. Uh, uh, during the early X Games, that was ascertained. And so uh, they have the benefit of having beliefs that happen to be already verified. Um, yep. Well, they can say I told you so all day long. Anyway, uh, Terran uh, Senatorial Advisor. And that is where we are right now. Oh, uh, of course, uh, they gave us a name at the start, but we can change our name. Um, if you want to change your own name, you can do that whenever you can, uh, whenever you want to. And there, there is plenty of information baked in here, hidden somewhere. Like there's, there's an encyclopedia of entries about weapons your weapons, range, fire rate, speed, maximum energy, energy consumption, prices, uh, ships that can use it, places that you've discovered that sell it. So you don't have to remember all that information. It's all right there in the encyclopedia. You just have to remember that it's all right there in the encyclopedia. There's stats, there's graphs, if you want to see player kills. Well, I haven't killed anything yet. Uh, this is a graph of all your money. Yeah. So... So yeah, uh, you've got all the information you could want, actually. And um, there are a lot of X-Game enthusiasts out there. So I imagine you could get help if you are stuck somewhere. Right now, I'm not playing the plot. There are plot missions, and you could do those things, but I've totally ignored that, and I generally do when uh, when playing these games. The exceptions, uh, exception might have been like the very first one. That one I felt more engaged by the plot, but generally I don't. Water purification plant. Let's see what mission that has. This is what we need. This might prove a hard mission. Does it interest you? Uh, see, it's a hard mission because they only give you 17 minutes to get these energy cells over here. Uh, I'm not interested anyway. Though we know where to pick up the energy cells. Those will disappear eventually. Eventually some ship will pick it up or it'll just... Those crates that were left behind by that battle will just go away. They won't uh, persist forever. Uh, those kinds of uh, delivery missions are not the only ones. You, there are assassination missions and other exploration type missions. So uh, those will have different icons. I don't know if there are any around here. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. The system hasn't spawned many of the missions yet. Oh, I wonder if this is the right gate. Is this the right gate? Gate. Mercury. No, I don't want to go to Mercury. Let's go to Earth. Protein Paste Blending Facility Alpha. Meat and vegetables transport. Now that's got a lot of protein paste. paste. If we had a trading vessel, we should pick up that protein paste and sell it to wherever they need protein paste because it's full up. So it's the lowest price it'll ever be. The moon. Okay. We can definitely see the Earth there. Moon is probably behind the gate again. Uh, oh, there it is. That's a nicely rendered moon. I mean, again, considering when this game was released. It's a good looking moon. I don't think the mods have updated it, but uh, then again, I haven't updated the mod in ages, so... Most of the shipyard stuff is here by the moon, by the way. There's the USC shipyard. This shipyard serves as a USC ship production and repair facility. The majority Maybe for the, the videos I should turn off the, the computer explanation, so Earth. you can do that if you're if you're worried about this. Um not that one. 
Audio. Verbose ship computer. No. Okay. So now, now it won't uh, constantly be talking, hopefully. Um, but you can... Uh, well, we don't want to trade with it yet. But let's say... Info. These are stations. And the ST in the case that you need something that can carry a station in order to carry those. Obviously, this ship won't do it. But uh, we don't know the prices yet. We need to dock first or have that trading system extension. Um, and they all have different volumes. The... Well, I wouldn't say there's any rule about the larger volume ones being more expensive, but... Uh, here are actual ships. The Mammoth is a station transporter. Um, these are capital ships as well. And then it goes on down in class. And then, for some reason, because I added it in with a mod, Alliance Normandy SR2. And that's because I like playing the Normandy in this game. It's just, just how it is. But it's probably pretty expensive probably out of my price range at this point. Entering system Earth. Okay, now at the beginning they told us that there had been a terrorist incident that was blamed on the Argon. And that terrorist incident was the destruction of the ring around Earth. They actually had a sort of orbital docking ring. You can see the remnants of it here. Um, but basically the Earth orbit station if you will, was destroyed by terrorists. And that's being blamed on the Argons, and that's the cause of the current war. So anyway, uh, we've sort of gone the opposite direction. Normally when you explore, you go into the unknown. We have, uh, we have come back to the known. And the known... The known is a little bit worse for wear right now. There are some... Uh, I, I see a station over here. That's a station, all right. So they, they've been building additional stuff military here. Military base. Well, okay. It's a mil military base. So anyway, this is X3 Albion Prelude. There's, there's lots to it. I, I, back in the day, I spent hundreds of hours uh, in the game. And I still think it's a solid game. I, I think it is a good experience and uh, provides a lot of role-playing possibilities. I'll, that's definitely the case. But it is a single-player game. So, to some, that uh, makes it less enjoyable than something like EVE Online. But anyway, it's uh, on sale on Steam. I think it's like five bucks. And I just thought I would point it out. So this is your intro to X3 Albion Prelude. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.